Cool. Thank you. I hope you folks can still hear me. Yes. Uh, yep. Yes. Yes. Cool. Okay. Cool. Um, so I will be talking about Wikidata. Um, Wikidata is a community project that is very close to my heart. It's still relatively unused, but it's quite exciting what you can do with it. And I hope to spread some of that enthusiasm today. You know all of this. Um, so let me just get started. Wikidata sounds awfully similar to Wikipedia, and that is because it is made by the same people. It's made by the Wikimedia Foundation. Um, and if we start looking at Wikipedia, it's pretty cool, right? We manage to come together as humans to collect all of the world's knowledge. We have this exemplary article here about Berlin, where we can read that Berlin is the capital and the largest city of Germany. The problem for us as data people is that Wikipedia is made for humans, uh, not for machines. And maybe we want something for machines as well. Um, if we scroll down here, we see that there's lots of information about Berlin um, in a more structured format in the table on the right. But still, this isn't machine readable. And this is where Wikidata comes in. Um, the idea of Wikidata is to, again, come together to model the world's knowledge, but this time to do it in a machine-readable format. So on the left side of every Wikipedia article, you can actually go to the Wikidata article, which will look like this. Um, so we see here, okay, we also have something that is called Berlin. Note that here we don't have any language versions anymore. There's just one item. It's called Berlin, and it has an identifier. Um, and then this item can have multiple translations. Uh, and this kind of looks like the Wikipedia page, right? But there's no text on it. Instead, there's columns. And if we scroll way down here, we can see, okay, this is kind of the same sentence that we uh, saw in the article, but now it's machine readable. We see that Berlin is the capital of Germany. We also see that apparently there's more items that this applies to, that it, for example, was the capital of Nazi Germany or the Kingdom of Prussia, um, but more on that later. Coming back to Wikipedia, it's also pretty cool for Wikipedia because now stuff like the info box on the right can be filled from this machine readable information, um, which of course makes it much easier for smaller language versions. Now, whenever, for example, Berlin publishes new population data, not every language's editors have to go into their page for Berlin and update the population data. Instead, they can load it centrally from Wikidata. Um, so this is like how Wikidata looks on the outside. To kind of give you an insight for what you can do with Wikidata, this is an example project that I built a while ago. It's called Stadtland Wikidata. Um, it's based on this German and I think international game that you play with kids mostly where you count in your head uh, through the alphabet, you stop at a certain letter and then everyone has to come up with a city, a country, a river and whatever that starts with this letter. And this is a version that I built with it um, where everything that you put in will be validated with Wikidata. So here someone had to put in something for the letter D and they came up with Dresden and Deutschland. Um, they didn't come up with a river um, or an occupation, but we can also see that Wikidata can propose occupations to us that would start with this uh, letter. And of course, the city and the country are also validated against Wikidata. So we're asking Wikidata, is there actually a, an item that is a country and that is called Deutschland in German? So this is an example for what you can do with it. Uh, let's get into it and let me show you how this actually works. And the way that it works is through something that's called a knowledge graph. The data model is actually pretty easy. Everything in Wikidata is always triplets. Um, and they're triplets of subject, predicate, object. So we have our subject Berlin again here. It has a predicate, which is country. And that has an object, which is Germany. So we have the sentence, Berlin is in the country of Germany, a subject, predicate, object. Now, since this is a graph, every object can also be a subject. So we can look at Germany and we can see that it has a head of government, which is Angela Merkel, or that it is an instance of a sovereign state. And you can imagine that you can continue this graph on and on. We can find more information about Angela Merkel. We can find more information about what a sovereign state is. Um, we can also store uh, plain data, so we can say that Germany has a population of eight and a half million people. 
Again, uh, since we want to be language independent, all of this is actually modeled internally with numbers. We have Q numbers that denote items and we have P numbers that denote properties. So we might have the triplet Q64, P17, Q183, meaning Berlin has the, is the country of Germany. Um, what we also have is, as we saw in the country example earlier, we can have multiple statements for the same property. So we can say that Angela Merkel is the head of government in Germany, but so is Gerhard Schröder. And now we can add an extra information on this property. We can add what's called a qualifier saying that this statement stopped being true at a certain point in time. Um, this is something that isn't possible in traditional relational databases, right? Usually you have a column and it has value, and here we can have multiple values, um, which allows us to model our complex world. Um, but again, in its essence, the data model is quite simple. We have subject, predicate, object. Uh, all of this data is put into Wikidata by volunteers. Uh, everyone can edit it just like Wikipedia. Um, you just edit the data, you don't edit text. Um, but what we probably want to do most is we want to query the data. We want to do something with it. So I'm going to show you a couple of um, queries. Uh, they can all be executed online through the Wikidata query interface. And we'll take a look at this. Uh, let's start with a very basic query. Um, so we have the most basic query here where we select uh, something that we call a city and it needs to match um, a certain condition. It looks a bit like SQL, but it feels quite different. But essentially, we come back to this concept of subject, predicate, object. Um, you might remember that Q64 was the number for Berlin, and the property P190 is sister city or twin city. So actually, what we're doing here, we're saying, give me, or let's start from Berlin, look at the property sister city and whatever matches that let's call that city and then we're selecting the city um worry not you don't have to remember all of these there's auto completion in the query service so actually what i did is i started typing wdt and then i typed sister sit and it proposed to me okay you probably mean p190 so i executed this query and if you look at the bottom of the screen there there we have our table which just contains one column called city and it contains all of the items um, this isn't very exciting yet we probably want to not only have the items we also want to have their labels um, because we don't know all of these numbers from the top of our head right um, so we can ask the wikidata label service to please also add the label for us and what this will do is it'll just uh, look at every variable that we're querying in our example, this would be city, and it'll add another variable with label appended. Um, in our case, I'm asking for the English label. So now we have two columns, there are city and city label, um, where we have the identifier or the link on the left, and on the right, we have the English label. Um, of course, since this is a graph, we can now look for a predicate on the former object city, which now becomes the subject. So we're again, finding all sister cities of Berlin. And now in the sister cities, we're asking for their coordinate location and we're storing that in a new variable called coordinates. If we now scroll down, we see, okay, there's coordinates. Um, now to make this a bit more interesting, we can click on that eye on the left there and change the default view and we can turn it into a map. And now we in five lines of Wikidata query have a map of all of the sister cities of Berlin. Uh, we can go a step further and for every city we can also get the country and now for every country we can look for the uh, countries where the language that's spoken is English, so where the official language, this is P37, is English. Uh, we need to be a bit more precise though because we don't only want to search for the items where the official language is English it could also be any subclass of English um, you might ask why do we need to do this and this is because in Wikidata in the United States you don't actually speak English you speak American English but American English is a subclass of English 
So by this, we limit down our query to three results. Um, we have London, Los Angeles, and Namibia, I think. So this is sister cities of the city of Berlin, where in the country, the official language is English. You can see that by taking a couple of hops, you can build quite complex queries. Um, we can also execute filters like you might know from a traditional um, database. So here again, we're querying the coordinates and the country. And now we're also limiting this down to cities where the population is bigger than 5 million, which just leaves us with one result. So again, uh, this is something that you can do at query.wikidata.org. And we can also look at some more um, interactive queries because we saw now the table and the map, but there's also, for example, a timeline. Um, so this is coming back to the example where we looked at the country that Berlin belonged to. And if you remember from the very beginning, the example with the head of state of Germany, we saw that in a predicate, we can have what is called a qualifier that adds more information. So here we're getting all of the statements for which country does Berlin belong to. And now for the statements, we're asking, OK, when did this start and when did this stop? And by querying this information, um, the query service notices, OK, this looks like time based information. I can render this as a timeline. And now we have this interactive timeline of which countries did the city of Berlin belong to over the ages. There's also an abbreviated version of writing this, but uh, this is just for reference. There's other interesting uh, visualiz visualization modes, such as the bubble chart. Um, the Wikidata Query Service actually has a lot of examples. Um, this is uh, the example causes of death for American presidents. I think it's just a nice example for because ballistic trauma is the nicest way of saying uh, this person was shot. Um, we have other kinds of rendering as well, such as the line chart. This is the population development of neighboring countries of Germany. Um, so again, of course, we don't need to have a list of the countries ourselves. We can just ask which are the neighboring countries of Germany. And then for those, we uh, get all of the population data and then we can create this graph view. There's many other types of visualizations. You can, for example, easily build an image grid or an area chart, a tree chart. Um, this just makes it easy to kind of explore what is in Wikidata. Uh, we don't live just within the query service, though, so I want to show a couple of examples for projects that can be built with this. The Wikidata community somehow is always very interested in political data. So there's this uh, now defunct project called Every Politician, where their goal was to simply create a database of every politician in the world. And they realized that it doesn't make sense for them to build this on their own. Instead, they should centralize this in something that is maintained by the community. So actually, this is a way to get political data into Wikidata, which is quite cool. Um, this is a nice example that was created at Hackathon that I attended. Here you put in a queue number, so an item in Wikidata. In this case, this Q11344 is chemical element. And now the website goes and looks at all of the items in Wikidata that say they are a chemical element. And for all of them, it checks what properties do they have in common. In our case, this is atomic number and mass. And it creates this card game based off them. It also takes the description from Wikidata. It takes a picture from Wikidata. And it creates us this kind of Trump style card game. The cool thing about this is that really all of the information that you give is I want this for a chemical elements. You can also easily create a card game of countries or of console games or of card games. Anything that you can think of, you just put the queue number in there and you automatically get this uh, set of playing cards with their most common properties and with a nice picture. Um, this is an example that I built. I was wondering how many of a country's largest cities do you need to put on a map before you can uh, notice the shape of the country by its cities. So this is the 200 largest cities of Germany. You can change the settings up there and kind of play around to see um, how many it takes to, to be able to spot the country. This is another small example that I built um, because I always wanted to build some kind of Tinder style game. Um, it's called Nationalist or Not. 
Here you get a picture of a politician and they're either from a left party or a right party and then you need to swipe left or right um, judging from their picture if they're probably from a left party or a right party. It's surprisingly easy to do this. One last uh, example. This is a parliament chart and this parliament chart is also completely built from Wikidata. So we ask what are the members of parliaments? What's their party? What's the party's color? What's the color's RGB value? And then we can render this chart just from that. There's a lot of excitement right now in the Wikidata community. Uh, one is about lexemes. So this is lexiographical data, information about words and forms and senses. I haven't worked a lot with this, but people from the, yeah, from the lexiographical uh, realm seem to be very interested in that. And on the right, um, the software behind Wikidata, it's called Wikibase. It's also open source. And now more and more entities are publishing their own wiki bases. So this might, for example, be the German National Library, which says we have a lot of data that we can provide uh, and that we maintain. And then you can actually make queries that go from one wiki base to the other, which allows us to make even more interesting queries and to have data that we know we can trust because it is maintained by an entity that we trust already, such as the German National Library. Um, you can also edit wiki data. Uh, of course, there's visual ways of editing. There's two ways to do this. One is called quick statements. One is called open refine. Um, they're mostly in here, these slides, so that you have a reference later. You can also edit it um, automatically, mostly with Python. Um, this is also for reference, but mostly I want to encourage you to just go to querywikidata.org, look at the examples and play with it to see kind of what you can come up with, what you could build. Um, because I think Wikidata is quite exciting. It allows us to quickly answer questions about the world and it encourages us to feed this information back and to broaden the world's knowledge in this machine readable format. It's quite exciting what, you, uh, what we can do with it and I really hope that uh, you're going to check it out. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you. We have a couple of minutes for questions. Do we have any questions on chat? I don't think so. So if anybody wants to ask with their voice, feel free to do that. And if not, uh, you can ask in the Slack, in the, the Tech Weekly thread. I hope Knut will take a look at that if there's any questions later today. Thanks for the really great presentation.